This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hello everyone, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to be looking at some basic but important tools in the Photoshop arsenal, guides and rulers. Both of these are essential if you're creating a design that has specific dimensional requirements, or if you're trying to align various objects and layers accurately and exactly in a composite or design. For example, we'll take a look at a project almost everyone can relate to. Creating a design to go on a CD or DVD label, such as we might have for a slideshow or movie that we want to pass along to clients or friends. In my case, I have some pre-cut labels that come two to a sheet. There may be Photoshop templates already created for this, but we're going to see how to do it ourselves, and in so doing, we'll never worry about having a template again, regardless of the application. Here we have two labels on a sheet, and I've simply measured them by hand with a ruler. I've noted the dimensions here for reference. We have each label being 4.5 inches in diameter, with a center hole that's 1.5 inches in diameter. We also know that the labels are 3 inches from the top and the bottom of the sheet and are aligned vertically in the center of the document. In order to begin to draw or place objects that meet these specifications, we'll want to lay down some guides. Guides are lines that don't print and they aren't part of your actual image but they allow you to align your cursor to the exact location of the guide. To place a vertical guide in the exact center of the document, we'll choose View, New Guide. And in the dialog box, we can choose whether the new guide is going to be horizontal or vertical. We'll choose vertical, and we can choose the position. And in this box, we can type our location in pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, any legal unit in Photoshop. But we can also use percentages. Since we want a guide in the exact middle, we can type 50%. And when we click OK, we get a guide right smack in the middle of the document. Notice that the guide is a cyan color. That's the default, and it can be changed in Photoshop settings. Notice also that it extends off the page, and it isn't really part of the pixels in the document. Let's create the horizontal guides for the centers of the two labels next. We can't use the 50% trick, so we'll need to use an actual dimension from the document edge. Now there's a simple way to do this, but we'll need to introduce rulers. To see the rulers, we press Ctrl R on Windows or Command R on a Mac, and notice that the rulers appear at the edge of the document window, with the zero dimension being in the upper left corner of the document by default. Now our rulers can be in pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, etc. Whatever we have specified in Photoshop settings. But we can right click on the ruler and we can choose any other unit of measure at any time. Very convenient. In this case, we're going to select inches. With the rulers turned on, there's a very simple way to create guides. We click in the ruler and drag onto the document to place a guide. Now while we're dragging, we can also add the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on a Mac to change the orientation from horizontal to vertical. Now we want a horizontal guide three inches from the top, so we'll drag down to about here. But notice in the cursor information shown, we're bouncing around and having a hard time landing on exactly three inches. We can add the Shift key which will constrain the position to align with the tick marks on the ruler. And looking at the ruler and cursor info, we can quickly position the guide at exactly three inches. Now, if you're having difficulty getting this guide to snap to the ruler's tick marks, make sure that you have View Snap turned on. This creates a magnetic attraction to the tick marks as you're dragging the guides with the Shift key down. Now, we'll need another guide three inches from the bottom as well. This is a standard US document, 11 inches tall, so we want the lower guide to be placed at the eight inch mark. And again, we'll use the shift key 
to cause it to snap exactly to the tick marks. Now we have the centers of our labels, but we need to create the boundaries for the outer circle and the inner hole. We know the labels are 4.5 inches in diameter, but rather than doing a lot of math to calculate the location of the edge of the circle, we can take advantage of another feature of the rulers. If we click up here in the left corner, in this blank area between the rulers, we can drag onto the document to reposition the origin or the zero point of the rulers. We can place them right at the center of the label to make the measuring easy. And notice now that we have the zero here and the zero here. Now, once again, in order to make sure that we get the rulers placed exactly, we'll need to make sure that view snap is turned on. Now with the origin set, we can drag our guides and with 4.5 inches as the diameter, we know we need for the guides to be 2.25 inches above and below the zero point. Notice that the dynamic display for the cursor shows the absolute measurement in the document, but we can refer to the rulers on the left and at the top to get the exact position. Now here in this case, I've dropped the guide in the wrong location. No worries, we can pick up the move tool and when we do, we can hover over the guide and we can start dragging that guide around once again. Once more, we can use the shift key to constrain it to the tick marks and this time we find the accurate location that we wanted. So we can continue dragging out the guides, both horizontally and vertically, again aligning them with the tick marks to make sure that we position them where we need them. Next we can add the guides for the center hole and since it's 1.5 inches in diameter we know that we need these guides to be positioned at 0.75 inches from the center location both above and below. Once more we are just simply dragging from the rulers using the shift key to align the guides with the tick marks and dropping the guides. Now we need to repeat this for the bottom label. Once again, we'll drag the ruler origin down to the lower label to get it positioned as the center. And that will allow us to easily create our guides here. We'll drag the outer guides for the perimeter at 2.25 inches up and 2.25 inches down. And then we just need the center at 0 0.75, 3 quarters of an inch above and below. With the guides created, we have everything we need to make quick work of creating our labels. We can accurately place images or even draw the circles ourselves. For example, if we grab the circular marquee tool, we can click the corners of the guides here and then release here to get an accurate circle without even adding the shift key. The snap feature ensures that we've picked a, exactly the right points. Next we can add the alt or the option key to subtract from the selection and once again clicking and then releasing at the corners gives us an exact circle and we can turn this off to see that we've got a perfect circle with a hole in the center. Now with this donut shaped selection we can add a new layer and press Alt Backspace on Windows or Option Delete on Mac to fill the label outline. We can use this label outline as a mask or as a selection, or we can paste other graphics into the selection. We're on our way. Now we can hide the visibility of the guides once we're done with them by pressing Control H on Windows or Command H on Mac. And pressing the shortcut key again toggles them back on. We can also choose View Extras and that has the same effect. Now if you want to delete a guide, you can again go back to your move tool, click on the guide, and simply drag it off the document. If you want to delete all the guides from your document, you can simply choose View Clear Guides. Guides are saved with the Photoshop document, so each document has its own guides, and you can create reusable templates for common needs. Now rulers, on the other hand, are sticky in Photoshop and will keep their settings, including the visibility across documents and across sessions. 
With guides and rulers, you can place objects and draw with precision and accuracy. I hope after watching this tutorial, you're comfortable enough with these tools that you can start using them in your own workflow. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.